Hello, welcome to the live q and I'm James Thompson. I'm the CEO here at Automaton. Uh, we're developing Mavericks, and we're currently uh, kind of just coming off the initial launch of the Forge, which is our way of building the game with the community. So I've got a few questions here to start us off. Um, I believe we're taking some live questions after this. Um, so let me try and hit on, I've got about 25, 30 questions here. Um, so I'll try and give you clear, succinct answers, get to this list, and then we can um, you know, answer any questions any of you have live in the chat. So the first question here is, when will people who signed up in June who aren't founders get access to the Forge? Um, so uh, initially, we've given access to any founder. Um, the first few weeks of the Forge are largely about uh, tech testing, um, you know, and we're layering content in week on week. There will be uh, one week during Christmas where there isn't an update, but generally speaking, we're doing uh, regular weekly updates. And uh, I think if, if you look at the um, E3 announcement that we did, we mentioned that the first 100,000 signups will get early uh, access to the game uh, before we make it truly publicly accessible. Uh, this is a date when we'll effectively email all those people and inject a load of players into the game. Uh, that would be great, obviously, both for them and also the founders who are uh, helping us out. These early days, obviously, are really um, an initial core community, um, and we've got some amazing feedback uh, from them. But I'm sure you know all of you who are, who are part of that would love to see you know uh, more players come with these more game mechanics. Uh, we feel the right time to do that is um, early next year. Um, it will be around the Hunter and Hunted. Uh, first core update to the game. Um, and that's kind of the stage at which we've moved largely past the initial core uh, technology test. Bear in mind we're using a brand new rendering engine, brand new networking technology. Um, you know, we're hugely grateful to our founders this early on from helping us test the game uh, already, because obviously these components are uh, very complicated, need to be tested live. Uh, that's why we've gone this route. Um, but the right time to really inject uh, that, you know, th those pairs is um, at that stage, you know, in a, in a few weeks' time, um, early next year. Uh, I haven't got an exact date of that launch just yet because that should come from our uh, production team who will confirm the exact timeline uh, to everyone uh, in the near future, but um, expect that early next year. So the next question, when will the game open up and be publicly available? Um, so obviously one of the benefits being a founder um, is you know, kind of exclusive access to the game. Um, it's far from the only benefit. In fact, the main benefits uh, are still to come. Um, what we'd like to do is make sure that uh, before we give access to the public, that we've actually you know, made sure that uh, we've represented founders uh, well enough in the game. There are a number of benefits you'd ex you should expect for you know, helping us out, supporting the game. Um, and so, uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that you know, obviously, a number of those things will go in the game first. Um, but beyond that, uh, when will it be publicly available? As you know, we're in a closed NDA uh, state right now just because uh, what we've got in the Forge at the moment doesn't really give you that full game loop experience of Mavericks. The game mode is kind of simplified. Even the initial Battle Royale events are simplified versions of that game mode. And that's because we're testing you know, important core elements. Uh, there are a number of good reasons for that. We've talked about in blog, blog posts. Um, so when we look at how uh, and, and when we want to open it up to the public, um, uh, well, we all know kind of what game, game beaters are kind of like now. It's kind of when it's reached that, that phase of, I can completely understand what this is when I hit it first time. We'll actually be um, kind of inviting a few players here and there after those initial 100,000 invites early next year. Um, and we'll be looking at the data that we get back from that to see how they're interacting with the game and kind of whether they get it, whether they become part of the community easily enough. So um, it's kind of when we see that shift in the, in the data. Um, roughly speaking, I'm expecting to that, that to be uh, mid next year, but you know, you should, uh, it could be earlier, it could be a bit later. It's, it really is based on that metric that we're looking at, right? The reason why we're building this game with you is to get your feedback to know when the right timings of some of these things are. Um, of course, you know, you should expect the game to be filled with quite a few players, though. Like, before we even open it to the public, right, it doesn't mean we won't bring more players in. Um, you know, we're just taking a number of steps along, along this journey, and, um, you know, that's obviously a big one, but there are steps to come before that. So the next one, how will BR work? How will players enter the game? Will it be a 1,000 players from the start of the match? Will it be different for solo duo squads? Um, if you're asking about the initial... Uh, play tests, which were starting very shortly. Um, this will be solo testing. Um, it could be up to a thousand players. Um, we won't necessarily kind of really drive the messaging to get as many players as we physically could into the game for these first few tests, because you know the most important things we need to test the nuts and bolts before we uh, really spam everyone to, to try and 
uh, fill up a lot of those servers. But so, so they may start with fewer players in the game initially. But yes, they do support a thousand players. Uh, we'll be running them in kind of isolated play sessions, um, specific periods of time initially, and then it will become something that you can constantly online match make next year. Um, so solo initially, then we'll be adding duos and squads. Um, how players enter the game, you'll be kind of automatically thrown in from the open world initially. But um, this completely changes uh, later on in the Forge when we introduce the social hub. Um, at this point, this will be a match made experience. You'll um, queue up whether you're in the open world or social hub. You'll then um, drop in through the drop hall. Um, and like an, so, so this will evolve over time. Uh, so it really depends on whether you're looking at the kind of final battle royale experience or the initial last man standing play tests. You know, one leads into the other. Um, but you'll see very shortly kind of how we begin testing this, and then we'll update that week on week. So what's the Founders Hall, and when can we expect it in the game? Um, the Founders Hall is part of the Social Hub, um, so it will come with an initial version of the Capital Social Hub. Um, again, the point of that is to recognize Founders, uh, so it will come in, and, and we'll see that as an update we'd like to put in before we give open access to the game to, uh, uh, for more people to come in and join us to test so that you can really you know, differentiate who's the founders. It's, it's the area where we credit you know, everyone who supported us through the early development of the game. Um, so you can expect that kind of along the lines of what I said earlier, like when we launch the game um, to be more openly playable, uh, which may be before the full launch, but it will be certainly later on in the Forge, kind of towards the end as we get close to the launch. So how long will the Forge be open? Uh, the Forge will be open certainly all the way up until launch. It might actually even continue until after that um, because we might still be testing certain things. I'm not sure about that yet, but the Forge um, you know, is, is something that leads up to launch. And obviously, we haven't announced our launch date yet. Um, but uh, yeah, effectively, that's the way we get to launch. Um, so we'll be able to introduce, you know, give you more and more info as we get through our first core update. Um, you'll get a feeling for how quickly the game's developing, and we'll get some of those metrics, and we'll, uh, we'll give you a an indicated launch date. What planned updates do you have for the map? Are you planning to add new structures, levels? So every week we update the map. I think this week there are a number of new structures in the map. Um, the initial version of the map you're playing, if, if you're part of the Forge already, is kind of a base layer. It uses a completely new way of building the map. We're able to essentially inject whole levels which will morph into the game world. Um, this, this tech's quite new. You know, we've previously um, you know, internal testing over the course of this last year. We've built various maps that look really nice and you can do certain things on them. Uh, what we're doing now though is making sure that we can do the huge world in a scalable way. Um, so if you play it now, you'll see that there's a lot of barren areas of the map. Um, that's changing week on week. Uh, sometimes that will be, you know, quick kind of uh, speed modeled areas. Sometimes we'll start layering in higher quality areas. It's really, um, the, the initial early days are kind of a mi mix and match, but really this is a weekly iterative process. There isn't one uh, update where the map's um, suddenly going to change hugely. I mean, it's really going to iterate, um, you know, over time. Um, and I think you know you should expect to see already you know, updates this week to that. Um, there is a kind of pivot, I suppose, that you'd really notice um, that will be early next year as we add the infrastructure into the map that ties everything together, um, and you start to see more of uh, kind of it being a cohesive place. We're first testing quite a lot of things, just plating a lot of stuff down, seeing how players interact with them like uh, individually. Um, but uh, before we get into the first core update, um, we will be uh, kind of setting, uh, we're kind of setting all that stuff into the really, the really kind of planned out version of the map that kind of ties into the narrative of the world. How is Automaton overcoming stability issues, destroying other BR games? Well, the way we're doing that is we're launching the game very early and testing it with you. Um, you know, this is a this is a more complex game than any BR game out there. So. You know, they're already having stability issues, then of course it's even harder of a problem to make sure that we have a rock solid game. Obviously we're using a lot of new technology um, and that solves a lot of those issues, but it does still need to be tested and that's why uh, we're doing the forge. Um, so you know, we do a mixture of testing. We have also a lot of automated testing that we've been using, but uh, it's a mixture of that and being able to kind of uh, essentially gradually piece by piece add more and more complexity into the game week on week because uh, that basically lets us have you know, the kind of um, full end-to-end -end testing we really need to build this kind of complex game. What servers are available now and are there plans to add more? So at the moment we have servers in NA and EU. Um, we will do that up until we open the game up to uh, largely to the public. I mean it's important that as we have kind of the smaller initial community that we don't 
split it uh, too much, but when it becomes publicly available um, later on during the forge, I uh, would expect to add a number of new regions. Um, I can't give exact details yet, but obviously a number more than NA and EU, as you'd expect from a standard um, you know, shooter game, really. So, um, are there any seasonal events planned, like a blizzard? So, yes, I mean, we, it, this Mavericks is, in a sense, an MMORPG. There are going to be events uh, regularly. Uh, it's not something we're doing immediately because we're obviously getting through the initial stages of the Forge this year, but um, as we get into next year um, and further along in the content of the game, we'll also have seasonal events. What community events are planned in the future? Will you hold tournaments, dev, community play sessions? Um, Yes, not too long in the future. Uh, we haven't finalized the plans yet, but we're looking to do dev play sessions, community play sessions. That's something that does make sense actually quite early on in the as a way for us to be interacting, um, you know, um, getting the feedback in an even more effective way. So that's something that we'll look at very shortly. T tournaments, of course, will be more around uh, the launch of the game. What other game modes will come in the future? Is there any plan for PvE content? So. Mavericks is all about having, it has an open world and then will also have the session based gameplay, the battle royale initially. Um, it, it will support other game modes, including session based, and uh, the open world in a way will be a mixture of a number of uh, different kinds of gameplay, um, and that may include some PvE content. I would say that Mavericks is a PvP focused game, it's a PvP focused shooter. It doesn't mean we won't have PvE content, um, but the focus of what Mavericks is is, is PvP. Um, so with the open world, um, I'd certainly expect a, a degree of PvE. Of course, when we add the wildlife systems and stuff like that, in a way that that's PvE that interacts with the PvP session, it will be stuff more along those lines. Uh, we will have a number of game modes, and that will really be determined by the community. You know, we're going to try quite a lot of things out, and this will both be session-based and open world. Um, the fundamental uh, kind of, if, if you ask, what it's kind of this uh, theme park of combat in a way. It's you know, this kind of makes it a sport. It, it's not all about necessarily um, the game mode you want to play, but also being in the social hub and accumulating gear. Like a lot of, uh, in the open world, you'll be able to invest that back in and, and kind of there's a lot of risk reward that happens beyond one session. So because we have that open world, that's going to be really an interesting dynamic and uh, that game mode will, uh, will effectively evolve um, and branch out quite a lot like an MMORPG would. Whereas with the Battle Royale, it's perhaps more like what you'd expect, you know, from a session-based competitive game type. Um, you know, there'll be leaderboards, there'll be ranks, um, and that's effectively how that would work. We can do more game modes, and that will then depend on um, kind of what the community's preferences are. Will there, like Fortnite, be building capabilities? Um, so, in uh, even in our first core update, we're looking at which is the Hunter Hunted update. We're looking at some destruction systems, uh, which we tested over the course of this year, which will be layered into the game. Uh, we have a load of those that we're putting in throughout the forge. Um, so there's certainly destruction. Uh, we, didn't, we haven't really looked much at building, although we have looked at reconnaissance. Uh, so you'd expect some kind of building, but more in a kind of tactical way, less in a kind of cartoony build full structures kind of way. Um, you know, it's, the game's not initially about that. It doesn't mean we won't explore those mechanics, and we'll explore a lot in the forge, and you know, that will be based on community feedback, and we could certainly support building. Um, but that's not really the direction we're uh, imagining the game will go. Will there be airdrops with equipment dropping into a field or any other attractions? Uh, yeah, I think you're referring to objectives, really. Uh, airdrops kind of being the simplest objective, and so we certainly will uh, try airdrops and, and have them in the game. Um, but we'll also have other kinds of objectives that spawn, um, things that are a little bit more complex that might be to do with um, holding areas of the map or timers. And uh, we're going to try quite a lot of different objective types. Um, as I've mentioned in kind of the videos I did, uh, around the uh, time we put the forge out a couple of weeks ago. The first few weeks are about uh, testing a lot of kind of the core tenets of what uh, the game will be built on. So we haven't put a lot of kind of gameplay systems in yet, uh, either in the open world and obviously we're, we're shortly going to test the battle royale. Um, but we are going to be layering those in and we have quite a few ideas. Um, so we're going to be testing a lot of different ones and seeing, seeing how they work. Will the game be more focused on being realistic or arcade based? Are you going to be sac sacrificing fun for realism or vice versa? Um, so it's a realistic game, um, but we're not making a game you know, that's supposed to be all about how well simulated it is. Uh, it's about fun more so than it is about realism. Um, I, but I wouldn't push to say it's an arcade-based game. It is realistic. It kind of sits between the middle. 
Um, I guess the idea here is we want it to be realistic. That's the feeling of the game, and that's also what enables it to be intuitive to play. Um, but if something is just more fun, we will make it that way. What further movement mechanics will be added? Vaulting, etc. Um, so the first focus of the animation team is further refinements of the first person shooting experience. We're doing a bit more of that as a focus still. Um, we really want to make sure that we're the absolute top standard in that. Um, and I think we're making very good progress. I believe we have procedural sways coming in shortly and a number of other things that will really kind of add those last few details. Uh, we also have a, a brand new UI system going in soon, which is going to be uh, very interesting. So once we've seen those come together, the focus from animation will move on to uh, a mixture of third person and then other kind of movement control like vaulting. So vaulting is a very high priority up there. Um, I'd expect to see it earlier next year, uh, but I don't have an exact date yet. It depends on uh, how we feel the progress of the first person shooting is. Because uh, I think we'll all agree, like we really want to refine that and get that to a good place. Um, but it is a high priority and you should see it soon. What is the objective of the game? What's the story? So I touched on this uh, earlier, and there's some narrative on the website. If you check that out, there's a story page that gives you a bit of context around the factions um, and the capital. Um, we're going to be releasing a lot more of that as we open up the capital. It's, um, the game has both an open world uh, kind of side to it and the kind of what the session-based uh, battle royale style sessions. Um, so the objective in the sessions is going to be much like what you'd see from a, uh, a battle royale game today in terms of you know last man standing. Although um, our focus as we get uh, more and more into the forge is going to be on using a lot more information and dynamic systems to be more strategic. Uh, we're also trying obviously thousand player games and other such things. Uh, so it's really just at a bigger scale and, and more information. But if you look at the open world, then that's in a way a very uh, different way of approaching the game. You know, the idea is you can drop into the open world. And the session length is kind of what you make of it. How much you put into the session is how much you risk. Um, and then how long you spend in there before you extract uh, sort of gear. Like this, this is the, we're looking at these kinds of open world dynamics that border on kind of MMORPG. So um, in a way, uh, it's harder to define exactly uh, the Mavericks open world. It's really um, a kind of experience that's hard, a bit harder to put, put into words. But those are the two ways you can look at Mavericks. And they use the same. Uh, worlds, they use the same gun mechanics, it's just one is kind of a competitive session and one is a, a, a economically driven uh, open world and they tie together in the social hub. Is there a plan for Mavericks Proving Grounds to make it to console? Uh, yes, we expect it to be on console at full launch. How will you maintain the skill-based elements in the game and what other elements are you looking in order to promote a game that rewards skilled players? Um, so like I was just saying, I think in the Battle Royale in the session-based elements, I think it's quite clear that it's uh, a focus skill-based session uh, where you, you're looking at things like ranking and high, uh, ranking, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and in the open world, um, there is a degree of investment versus return, like as well as the skill, and it kind of balances a bit more. Um, but how we maintain that is really through, as you'd expect from a, a shooter, you know, it's all about the gun balancing. And we're getting a lot of good feedback right now, actually, um, even in these early stages on the details of gun balancing and how that can work for uh, both the more casual players and the more competitive players. Um, it might, we can balance it differently depending on the game mode, although we we'll tend to try and find the, the best kind of unified medium depending on kind of how that works out during the forge. Um, so, you know, we maintain the skill-based elements really by balancing gunplay the right way. Uh, that will then also bleed in as we go into our first core update, Hunter and Hunted, in how much information you can get from the environment. You'll be able to leave footprint trails, bend the grass, uh, destroy various things. Um, as we look at that, of course, that brings a new layer of strategy, and no one's really seen that before, especially not at massive scale with a lot of players. Um, so that's something I think we're all going to learn from and iterate. What are CRTs, how do they work, and why are they beneficial? So CRTs are some initial tokens that can give you progress throughout the early days of the forge. They let you unlock the faction gear. Um, essentially, we'll be using these um, to reward participation in the early days of the forge. Um, they unlock cosmetic content, and that will be recognized in the final version of the game in a way that no one will be able to get again in the future. Um, so far, we've got a very basic initial game mode, so you essentially kill other players and deposit them. Um, but we are in the open world. Uh, you also get them for winning Battle Royale. Um, but the dynamic of how you get these will you know, change as we test different gameplay over the course of the, the Forge. And by the time we add the economy, then uh, at the moment we're looking at CRTs being then effectively replaced by the currency system of the game. 
we will be able to keep any rewards gathered during the forge. Oh, so I just kind of touched on that. Um, so it's not necessarily that you'll be able to wear it again, but we will, we will certainly recognize all the rewards. We wouldn't want you to feel like you know, you've invested time into the game and that we devalue that. Um, so we'll find a way to recognize it. That may be in terms of a trophy that represents the progress for your players, your time during the forge, and stuff along those lines. Uh, we've not finalized the exact details yet, but we will be recognizing that progression. Um, if it's something that needs to be replaced by something new, there will still be a way in which it's recognized in, in the social part of the game. Will there be creative transportation, like Ring of Elysium, snowboard, snowmobiles? Uh, yes, uh, there's a vehicles update. You'll see it on the timeline um, for the forge. Um, that will start with the more standard stuff. But the vehicle system we already have is, um, you know, supports a number of different kinds of. Uh, you know, vehicles, and it certainly would support snowboards, snowmobiles, even helicopters. Like that, obviously, like um, you know, we'll see what works best for the game. Um, we have a vehicle system um, that we're looking forward to trying out, um, but we'll see. And there are obviously the higher mountainous areas of the map, so I would expect to see some kinds of, of snowmobiles up there. So we'll see how that goes. What are the core updates mentioned as, mil as milestones on the website? How long is this timeline? So this timeline runs until um, effectively when we announce uh, the full launch of the game, pretty much up to the full launch of the game. Um, it's uh, you know, something which we haven't put dates on just yet because we want to test out you know, and see the progress in the first few weeks of the Forge before we commit to it. But um, t typically each uh, core milestone we're looking at um, around two months um, of development. Uh, it, it would depend, some short, maybe it could be a bit shorter, um, but we'll really see how it goes. Um, so that gives you an idea if you look at the timeline, uh, kind of what we see as a core update. And then within each core update, we'll have weekly updates. Um, and we won't necessarily kind of just wait and put it all in a core update. You might see that the next core updates um, content is kind of getting layered in in the weekly updates in, in the run up to it. Right, I have to scroll down. We're almost through the uh, initial questions. What can founders expect in the first core update? Ah, so it's the Hunter Hunted update. That is one in which we're introducing uh, some initial uh, tracking and destruction mechanics. Uh, these are things like footprints and uh, some more kinds of destruction, uh, grass bending. Um, it will also come, um, and the initial plan is to have some amount of initial attachments as well, because um, you know there's a lot of requests from that around uh, getting a better feeling for the guns. Um, but we will give you a, a full list very shortly, um, beginning of the year. So we'll let you know very soon. Um, but that's really the theme of the update, Hunter and Hunted. What weapon attachments will be making an appearance, e.g. scopes, sights, silencers? So all of those will be. If you look at the timeline, we do have an update that's focused around uh, attachments. Doesn't mean we won't have some sooner, as I just mentioned, but um, you will see all of those things. What explosives will be added? Uh, and uh, is there any plan to add traps, e.g. mines? How will the environment respond to destruction? So certainly, like we do plan to add a lot of kinds of exp uh, destruction explosives. Some of them will come in our first core update. In fact, uh, you know things like grenades and mines are all on the table. They won't all come in one batch, uh, but throughout the forge, I expect any of those things we will have tested. Um, how will the environment respond to destruction? So there are a number of different ways we can destroy things in the environment. Uh, there's even some initial basic destruction in the capital blockouts right now. Um, but of course, that's, that will get further refined. And then we have uh, systems that can dynamically destroy objects. For example, if you shoot a tree, where you could kind of cut across any part of the tree, depending on where you shoot, things like that. So we have a number of systems that we want to layer in. And this will, there will be a big kind of kickoff of this in the Hunter and Hunted update. Um, but there will still be further systems added throughout the subsequent Forge updates. And that's it. That's it for the initial questions. Now I'm kind of looking behind the camera and wondering, what do I answer next? OK, so should I repeat the question? Yeah. Can they hit? OK. So I'm being asked about the economy, um, sort of how, whether there'll be tradable weapons and such. So uh, when we introduce the social hub into the forge, this will include an economy. Um, so yes, uh, the open world, in fact, will be largely based around uh, economics uh, in, in the final version of the game. The idea is that you could um, invest more in a session, and then you're risking more, but you could more easily get rewards. 
Um, so the whole dynamic is kind of the more you bring in, the more risky it is, but you know, you're, you're kind of aiming for that higher reward. Um, and vice versa, you can go in with nothing, but then you don't, you're not really losing anything if you die. Um, and then you kind of need to extract to the social hub and you're really accumulating wealth and gear. Uh, as such, there's the currency of the world. Um, there are, obviously you can buy guns around that. Doesn't mean you can, you wouldn't be able to bring that in necessarily to you know, the kind of competitive sessions, but um, really there will be an economy in place and that will be a big part of the game. So, just to repeat, why are we uh, bringing people in uh, early in the AAA game dev cycle? Um, as you may know, typically AAA games take three years to develop, and we're one year into the develop of development of Mavericks. Um, we talked about this a lot, and we announced a beta at E3, and, uh, which we didn't end up releasing. Um, and it came down to this, like, we could polish certain aspects of Mavericks and give you a game. Uh, but if we did that, the way you get from that game that's, that's more polished, more finished, but only a slice of the experience into everything we want to do with Mavericks is not so clear, you know, and that's how you kind of get stuck in a rabbit hole. We're, you know, we're quite ambitious with Mavericks and we really want to deliver on the vision. Um, and fundamentally, the way we do that is by building out a lot of new platform tech and such. Um, because we're doing this new stuff, it, it fundamentally needs players in from an early stage. We did pivot our approach and that meant that, you know, there are some lessons we've learned that mean that we could approach the Forge launch better. Um, but we are confident that bringing players in early is definitely the best thing for developing these complex new online games. Fundamentally, no matter how much we test internally, like we cannot uh, you know, really work out the dynamics of the game. Um, it is in a very early stage right now, uh, but kind of we do have a core community who are really helping us out. We've already got a lot of very useful feedback. Uh, fundamentally, when you're dealing with a complex multiplayer game like this um, and so much new technology, um, while there are always, in theory, ways that you can kind of make individual tests and bring them all together, um, unless we have a core community and a need to rapidly iterate each week, really it's easy to lose kind of perspective. Uh, and you know, there are so many different ways this game can go. Uh, we focus entirely on developing the right infrastructure here to update the game regularly and understand what players are doing in the game. Um, so as a result of that, we ended up with the forge as it is today. Um, I think that if you look in a small number of weeks' time, then perhaps it would feel a little bit more like you'd expect if you're kind of expecting more like a beta, like we are putting in content relatively quickly. Um, but the reality is these first few weeks are a combination of our need to kind of pivot the approach of, of Mavericks and also the fact that it's much more efficient for us to ask for, your, for, for the core founders' help now. We'll just get the game to everyone faster. So the ultimate mission for a year or two's time, in a sentence, um, I would say really like with Mavericks, we set out to build really the ultimate strategic PvP shooter. Um, I mean, if I had to capture it, like that's one way I would put it. Another way I might put it is um, that kind of like the, in a sense, a, a theme park of, of combat. You know, it's uh, we're really building an open world community here. Like it's we see it in many ways as an MMORPG. Um, no games really the extent to which we are doing combined competitive session based play with an open world. Um, perhaps another way you could look at it is kind of related to the Hunger Games in a way and trying to both create that backdrop um, and meaningful world and persistence while still having competitive games that happen so that you can consume the content in both ways. So there's something to kind of look forward to, uh, be competitive about, but then also uh, an open world of, you know, there's far more to explore and, and a different kind of depth. So that's not a sentence, but I had a few sentences in there. I'll definitely pick one of those, one of those sentences. Fantastic. Cheers. So what we're going to do is we'll get a transcript of this and we'll put it on a blog post next week. Um, I obviously, we do have an update to the Forge coming uh, tomorrow. And we'll also be doing an update next week. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. And thanks for watching.